Hello, good morning and welcome to the AM News with me, Mampisa Sibiri. Now on our first story, the Savalugu Hospital, which was closed down due to COVID-19 infections among hospital staff, would resume full service today. Now this follows the successful fumigation of the facility. The decision was reached at a review meeting to deliberate on modalities to resume full service delivery. The Savalugu Hospital was closed to the public last month after 64 tested positive for COVID-19. A release by the hospital said almost all staff who tested positive have already done the 14-day isolation and therefore no longer infectious. The statement added that the backlog of samples at the laboratory has also been cleared. Away from that, residents of Sokodo in the Volta region are worried about erratic water supply to the area. They say their taps have hardly run for almost five months, a situation that is affecting their lives, especially during the miscovered season. They want the Ghana Water Company to fix the situation. Correspondent Fred Kwame Asari reports. Ghana Water Company Limited has been unable to meet the demands of customers in the home municipality due to population growth. The company was forced to ration the supply of water. However, the five divisions of the Sokode traditional area barely get supplied with water. The residents are compelled to rely on other water sources including unwholesome water bodies for domestic use. Addressing the press, the assembly member for Sokode Bogame, Mark Billions Bansa Dixon, lamented the situation. The good people of Sokode have been denied access to water, which is a basic social amenity, by the Ghana Water Company, thereby compelling residents to share water with animals and to depend on water from unhygienic sources such as streams, wells, dams, etc for their domestic use. The situation has also been placed with financial burdens on some residents who have to pay for tanker services or pay to fetch water from private mechanized borehole dealers at a high cost. We are therefore by this premise appealing again to Ghana Water and the central government to make the required investment and to address the situation to curtail daily sufferings of the people of Sokodi traditional area. Our taps must flow. We need water. Our communities cannot be sacrificed because the very treated plant at Keve that serves other communities within the whole municipality is the very water station we are also connected to. So why should water be flowing in other communities and not for the people of Sokodi? This is unacceptable. The chief of Sokodi Bogame, Togbe Adinchiri VI, appealed to the management of the Ghana Water Company Limited to ensure equitable rationing of supply in the municipality. We are dying. We are dying. Sokodi is dying. He has not done it, but he stopped us. What to demonstrate? Assembly now managed to get to uh, regional officer. What else? Ghana Water as a whole. Oh, so they have not got uh, enough uh, uh, reservoir. So called it the death we are so far. No ration, the enemy did. Ration. At least in a week. So called it will have two days to get water. Another sector, two days. Another sector, two days. They can run it for us that way until things are managed. Now, we are in the blue. No, we have been forgiven, for, for, forgotten. So Korea has been forgotten altogether. We should die, the others will survive. The residents are hoping their plea would be heard and acted upon to save their lives and investments. They served notice of using lawful means to register their displeasure if authorities do not heed to their plea after 14 days. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News, Sokodi, Bogame. Now, the Asanka Gold Mines wants to help fight crime in the Amansi South District in the Ashanti region through the rehabilitation of roads. Now, the project to reshape 
and improve the bad road network will also help facilitate business growth in the area. Residents have recently complained about an increase in the number of crimes and call for government's intervention. Mahmoud Mohammed Nuruddin reports. The construction work would cover a 53-kilometer stretch of roads within Amansia South District. Uh, one, we were motivated by the fact that the, the roads in this area are deplorable. And we are all users of the road. Our employees live in the neighboring communities. So we thought it appropriate to draw a plan, road maintenance plan, to fix the road for the benefit of our employees and the stakeholder communities. The project will cost the company $392,000 and would be carried out quarterly across the district. This is reshaping. The budget we have now cannot do bitumen on the roads. We are doing reshaping and it will be done every quarter. Bad roads are one of the major challenges facing residents in the area. District Chief Executive Clement Opoku Jemfi lauded the initiative um, to ease the, the burden on the assembly. Um, we, as the District Chief Executive, I met them and I outlined my vision with, to them and they bought into the idea. So we had to sit down. We've had series of meetings, uh, most of them in my office, because and they have been very collaborative, I must say. And so they have finally agreed to um, solve part of, of our problems for us, which is uh, the chunk of it that is bad road network. And so they are not giving us a bitumen or an asphalt, but however, they are going to do a reshaping I mean, to make the roads more trouble for now. Um, where they are to fix coverts, they will fix coverts. So it's a collaboration between the uh, Master Service Assembly and the Asanko Gold Mine. We, we, we are very happy for such a gesture and we hope and pray for more of such um, gestures. A report by Mohamed Nuruddin. Now, farmers and stakeholders in the agricultural sector in the western region have been trained in agroecology to ensure sustenance in agricultural sector in the coming years. The training was as a result of investigations that the continued activities of illegal mining and exploration of oil and gas in commercial quantities are gradually depriving farmers of access to arable lands for food production. Western Regional Director of Agriculture, Patrick Koa, advised farmers to adopt innovative farming methods to ensure sustenance in food production. Nathala Kwanza has the rest of the story. The two-day workshop was organized by the Peasant Farmers Association for Farmers, District Agricultural Directors, Media and other stakeholders in the agri sector. It came out that farmers can no longer rely on farming methods that are detrimental to the environment considering the fact that farmers are already struggling for lands to farm on. The Western Regional Director of Agriculture, Patrick Kua, stressed the need for farmers to go back to traditional model of farming which protects the soil cover and maintain the land fertility. We should not focus on using huge implement and then thinking that modernization is just about mechanization. We should make sure that when we want to modernize it doesn't take away uh, agroecology. All that we are talking about modernization is that what is new and how can we improve on the old factions? So if you want to modernize, what we are saying is that we can still use a system that employs tractors and machines and other equipment, but that will not destroy the environment. And maintain the land fertility. The executive director and head of programs for the Peasant Farmers Association, Dr. Charles Nyaba, also touched on the effect of illegal mining on farms in the western region. But in recent times, because of the discovery of oil in the western region, farmers are relegated 
their farm lands are taken for commercial activities. Uh, some few uh, corporate organizations that are around claim they are also going to produce food by buying lands from smallholder farmers. So we are thinking that if you don't do something fast to promote the activities of smallholder farmers in Western region, there will come to a time these farmers will die out of poverty. Some beneficiaries of the workshop also spoke on how the activities of illegal mining and the exploration of oil and gas are affecting them and the country's food basket. I will call it Galamse because it is popularly known in Ghana and it is 100% affecting the lands within the setup in the whole country at large because one will bear with me. You cannot farm on a Galamse land and get your yield as it's supposed to be. One, as soon as the excavators work on the land, most of them leave the pits uncovered. They don't cover. Apart from people falling into them and dying and all that, it becomes dead trap and all that. So you, it, it's dangerous for a farmer to work on that area. That alone it's a big damage to the land. In the Western region now, due to the influx of the oil, oil and gas companies, they are taking over most of the land and land for farming is very scarce now. So it's important that we train our farmers to let them know that the lands are no more there as it used to. So now if you, if you have a small piece of land, you can go into agroecology. Uh, this is whereby you will be farming on the piece of land for a longer time. For Joy News in Athalia, Kwanza, Western Region. It has been 37 years of raising leaders, shaping visions and influencing society through Christ at the International Central Gospel Church. Speaking in a sermon to celebrate the milestone, founder and general overseer, Pastor Mensa Otabal, acknowledged God has been gracious to him and his congregants despite the challenges faced since the church's establishment at the Kanda cluster of schools. Pastor Otoba encouraged everyone, especially church leaders, to continue to exemplify Christ in all circumstances. Today we pause to thank God for his faithfulness, for his goodness, for his kindness. He has been good to us over these 37 years. And I just want to encourage you on this day, as we remember all that God has done for us, remember to put Jesus Christ at the center of your life, personally, as an individual. And for the pastors, let us continue to keep Christ at the center of our church. Let us preach him. Let us honor him. Let us lift up his name. Let us exemplify him. And as we do that, his glory will be revealed amongst us. The past year, we know, has been difficult managing with COVID and, uh, and its uh, problems with church attendance and, and, and the disruptions. But God has not been disrupted. His purposes have not been disrupted. His intentions have not been disrupted. So I believe that the will of God concerning you will not be disrupted. Happy anniversary, ICGC, and God bless each one of you. And that's how we end the AM News with me, Mapisa Sibili. The AM Show continues with Mama V and Benjamin. Oh, what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> this is your typical cut on camera moment. <laughs> I was, I was just waiting to see whether you would keep on while we went on. Was... <laughs> oh no, I was going to expose myself like big you, time. You, you nearly did a kaki tiki 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 to me. But anyway, thank God you didn't. Welcome to March, y'all. Yeah. January, February, March. This is a beautiful Ooh. month. It's it's um it's a wonderful month. We Fantastic made it. month. Fantabulous we, month. We we made uh, it. We made it. Uh yeah. Okay. We made it. Okay. <laughs> All right. You know, when a month can do this to Mama V, then you know that it's a special month. It is a very special month, eh? Someday you will understand why. But um, we're marching to victory. Why are you in speaking this, in parables? In this, Someday in you understand month. why. Uh, it's a very, very interesting month. Mm -hmm. mm. But we thank God for another month. You know, especially now, eh? I don't know. It's not as though I were trying to be so moral or whatever, but 
every morning I wake up, I've always been grateful for life and health and everything. But especially in these times of COVID-19, and especially if you've been there and done that, when I wake up in the morning, I am so happy. <laughs> Charlie? Look, every week, only yesterday in church, I saw a poster of a certain man. Dea. Oh. He's gone. Of course, you can, it's an obituary. What caused it? Guess what? Oh. It's just the COVID-19 uh, related complications. That's what's taking a lot of lives these days. And I think that every week, see, we welcome the weekend. We're happy. But these days, you would definitely hear something in the week. Yeah. You know, God forbid. But it happens. And sometimes, before it used to be very far, these days it's come very close because you hear of somebody uh, who's related to someone who knows someone, and it's absolutely heartbreaking, heartbreaking every week. Well, we hope that you protect yourself. Uh, we will do our bit. Let's all take care of each other. That's what we can do as we welcome the month of March and we say hooray and thank God for the beginning of another month. And taking yeah. care of one another also means following the protocols. Oh, yeah, yeah. So absolutely. that I don't infect you, likely you don't infect me, we yeah. don't infect other people. Yesterday I told someone something and um, he sat there thinking about it for a while. I told him in these times of COVID-19, some of us have murdered others without even knowing it mm -hmm. or maybe con committed manslaughter in God's eyes because of our recklessness. Absolutely. Maybe we were asymptomatic. We were not really showing signs, symptoms, maybe we did not die, but other people have died. Yeah. It's in the, you know the, the story in the, what Mapito presented a while ago, the mm. Nalerugu, the training college. Uh, this is a nursing uh, midwifery training school and to think that they absolutely decided to, see, they decided to just let go of all the, the COVID. A few of them were wearing masks, but no physical distancing. And Around this time, you can't have a crowd like this, can you? No, it, it, you can't. You shouldn't have a crowd like this. You can't like have this. a crowd like this. And this is a nursing training. I wonder. I mean, I mean, know, so w w what are they thinking? We know that the, the the head of the facility came to to close it down, but they should have taken some responsibility by themselves. Absolutely not on. You can't do this. You can't have this. You can't have this. And they are in training you to be nurses and midwives. You know, unfortunately, I feel the Futu and Sachani Pajen Soshe thing is what we always want as a people. When, when, when our backs are against the wall, then finally people will. Mm. Look, yesterday I had this bit again people telling me the vaccines, for us to take it, lie, lie, <laughs> never. And this and that. And I had to tell them, look, I, I, I talk to immunologists and the rest all the time. There's nothing. You know, the last time I intentionally had to speak to Dr. Bediakma about the contents, ingredients in vaccines, just so people will know that, look, we're talking of lipids, fats, sugars, salts, mRNA. These are not things we, all these vaccines around, whether it's tetanus or, you know, interestingly, cervical cancer also has a vaccine. They, these are the things that are going to them. And of course, some deadened, I'm, I'm using, I'm not being scientific, versions of whatever virus or. So why would you be so afraid and they want to wipe us out and this and that? Well, media, I keep saying it. If I get, I'll take it because prevention is better than cure. Anyway, let, let's check out the, the, the papers this morning. Mama, would you like to start? Yeah, uh, let's start with the Ghanaian Times newspaper. Here's what's on the front page. LGBTQI Bruhaha Ghana won't legalize same sex marriage, never under my presidency, stresses president. But we know that the conversation is, um, it, it's a bit complicated. You know, this is just one aspect of it. And I'm not sure people were immediately thinking about marriage. It's the other things, mm. it's the other things. And some people have said that we wanted Mr. President to have gone a bit you know, further, just open it up a bit because now there's the bit of the advocacy bit. There are offices, you know, it's not That's what everyone away. is talking about now. It's not straight away to the marriage, Mr. President. Can you come again? You know? Because yeah. it's like the marriage, <laughs> the marriage is, even in countries that have legalized this, the marriage is sort of like at the end of the tunnel, at the tail end of all these discussions. Yeah. So it appears the president has, 
shot far ahead of the conversation. And now people are saying, no, there are many steps that you've jumped and we would have liked you to, you know, take a look at those steps. So it appears emphatic, but how emphatic uh, what the people want. Yeah. Uh, so I guess, you know, we're still on to this. Uh, the Ghana Health Service, though, says we're ready to administer COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, we know that the president, the vice president, uh, their wives, they will be taking the jab this morning, 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and we will get to see it live. Uh, COVID-19 vaccine president to take, okay, that's just what I've said, first jab. Oh, tomorrow, is, isn't it Monday? It's Monday, isn't it? Because the paper says tomorrow, Tuesday. Well, yesterday I did hear him mention it. It's either going to be today or tomorrow, but eh. definitely it's, it's going to Because the, it's going the to go down. other announcement that came that he'll be doing it at a 37 military hospital was today, 9 a.m. So and then the vice even, president even per the what, police hospital at 10 a.m. Even per what the Daily Graphic captures on the same matter, per his address yesterday, I want to, and this is a quote, I want to assure you that the vaccine is safe. That is why tomorrow on Monday, 1st March, ahead of the commencement of the vaccination program on Tuesday, 2nd mm -hmm. March, my wife, the first lady, the vice president, mm -hmm. his wife. So that's the dynamic. Yeah, they, are taking so, it, they are supposed to take it today yeah. in anticipation of tomorrow. Absolutely. So that you, you don't set the example after he said yeah. the example today. So, so I think the paper got this one wrong. GES places 494,530 candidates into senior high school. Uh, Tivet schools nationwide is one of our conversations this morning in the center spread. Well, what the president said about not legalizing same-sex marriage is in the center spread, the full story. Uh, the bit about the placement is also in the center spread. And then government approves additional $4 million for seven storm drains in Pokwasi interchange area. Uh, on page three, the crime-related stories, Nigerian schoolboys freed. Okay, no, not page three. This is page five. Sexual gender-based violence increased by 82% in the Volta region. It says cases of sexual and gender-based violence in the Volta region have risen to alarming heights in the wake of the coronavirus uh, pandemic, a total of 932 of such cases were recorded in the region in 2020 as against 512 in 2029. This represents an increase of more than 82% over that period. Well, man 32 allegedly murders wife 29 at uh, Olebu in Accra. Residents, uh, th and this particular area is near Ablekuma. And they woke up to the news of a gruesome murder of a mother of three by her husband in her room on Friday. Uh, the deceased Margaret Sam, 29, was found dead with her neck and head tightly tied with a piece of cloth and suspected oh. to have been killed two days earlier before uh, she was found as a result of the stench and flies hovering around the doors and windows. Police have consequently mounted a search for the arrest of the deceased husband, Kofi Abuaje, 32, in connection with the death of his wife. So this is uh, the police confirming the tragedy to the Ghanaian Times. And this happened at about 9.30 a.m. last Friday. Police received a report from a woman uh, that she woke up and perceived an offensive order from the room of her son, Abuaje, and his wife, Margaret. Uh, Okay, so earlier on Wednesday, so they found her on Friday, but on Wednesday, this, the account continues, uh, that her son brought his three young children to her with the explanation that his wife had gone out and that he was also going out to look for work as a commercial driver. Uh, the deceased and Abuaji have not been seen since then. Okay, well, you have to continue. There's more to the story, but this is... Hey, Charlie, this is scary, actually. This is scary. This is scary. So here's the thing. So uh, this is the mother of the husband mm -hmm. who called the police. Mm -hmm. But she says that the last time she saw her son and the wife was on Wednesday when the son came to her to say, I'm leaving the children in your care. I'm going to look for work. And my wife is also not in. That was the last time she saw any of them on Wednesday and then Friday they discovered that she had died in her room. So now this raises a lot of questions. Absolutely. And, um, 
I'm sure as the police investigates, we'll get answers to some of those questions. Okay, carpenter arrested over stolen coffin. Oh, that's bizarre. Uh, stolen what? <laughs> coffin? Yes, sir. Uh, um, he stole a coffin, okay, belonging to another carpenter. And this happened uh, at Aigbe Town near Kolibu in Accra. The suspect, George Amwa, who is in the custody of police assisting in investigations, is reported to have stolen the coffin valued at 2,200 Ghana cities for a relative's funeral. Uh, the Accra Region Police Officer of the Accra Regional Police Command, this is again DSP Afia Tenge disclosing this. Uh, so 7.30 a.m. last Friday, the complainant went to the Kolibu Police Station and reported that on same day at about 5.30 a.m., he went to Aigbe Town where he had displayed coffins for sale and found out that one valued at 2,200 had been stolen. Acting upon a tip-off, the complainant traced the stolen coffin to uh, Kole Woko in Accra and realized that another carpenter, Amwa, who is the suspect, stole, uh, stole it for the burial of a relative. <laughs> Whoa. So the, they, they followed up, yeah, and the coffin had been placed beside the deceased who was laid in state ready to be put into the coffin. <laughs> the family returned the coffin to the complainant and suspect was arrested. Okay, apologies. This Whoa. is supposed to be a serious story, isn't it? So, so, so what <laughs> happened? I mean, at the funeral, so what happens to the body? I'm sure they'll find another coffin. Oh, they did find another coffin. They didn't add it to Wait, the but story. But how do you steal a coffin? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> but, you know, come to think of it, this, this brings to mind this issue. You know, familial pressures, especially when there's a funeral, Especially if you happen to be the firstborn or something, you mm. must provide this, you must provide that. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe those pressures came up, the, the, the person didn't have it and decided, look, rather than shame myself in front of my family, I would have to do something. And unfortunately, he didn't oh, get it. But negotiate. I think some of these pressures when go it comes and to. negotiate for it. Charlie, yeah, in some families, there's no negotiation. No. no, I mean with the carpenter, because the person ah, well. displayed it. It was on sit. So just go and talk to him and tell him that, dude, I don't have the money, but I need a coffin. It's better than... Oh, that's sad. Yeah. That's really sad. Well. It will be so embarrassing at the funeral. Charlie. Well, let's check out some of these stories. Uh, how oh, you didn't want to hear about the cotter call. I thought you said you guys are uh, superior and everything, everything. Oh, it it, it, it was just a day of many misses. I mean, people hitting the masa, crossbar, masa, masa. the post... Uh, people missing penalties. <laughs> Look, your team didn't acquit itself. Pro Wait, why am I even calling it your team? You're, you are with Carella, you know, so... My heart, my heart is with hearts. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you, you, you keep shifting goalposts when it comes to the two teams. But, well, we're still on, on top of you. We're on the same stack of points, but we're still on top of hearts. So, no matter what, Krobia Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Daily Graphic, don't undermine our work. Judicial service tells media. Mama Vila, mm -hmm. two stories I'm going to take, especially because I know both of us would like to bite into them. And this is one of them. Now, in recent times, some people have criticized, you know, uh, judicial service and the entire setup because the feeling is that they are overweening. They are becoming, um, I'm choosing my words here. Maybe I shouldn't use that word. But the story says, with three days to the determination of the 2020 presidential election petition, the Judicial Service has advised the media to be measured in their reportage on the case. The service is particularly concerned about what it described as hateful, spiteful, and offensive statements against the, sevens, against the seven justices of the Supreme Court hearing the petition. And it goes on with Thaddeus Sorry representing you know, them to even talk about some media entities and posts they have put up, asking them to take those posts down because of comments by ordinary Ghanaians. And, you know, this whole bit about scandalizing a court. I mean, something, something Ladi Anyenene and others discussed this on Saturday. Yeah. And I think it was, I don't know whether it was H. Chrissy Prempe who was saying that it's got to the point where this whole thing about scandalizing the court, how we're approaching it, is becoming scandalizing. Yeah. You get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I don't know, <laughs> but... Because these are the same justices who said that they were basically immune, inured to some of these comments. And so maybe you don't know the law. You can spew whatever ignorance you like on social media and the rest. But we know the law and we're applying it. So why this? Now it's becoming a bit... I was a bit surprised when I, when I saw the letter on Friday, actually, because 
uh, the court had said, and I, I remember when they were telling the lawyers that they were uncomfortable with their comments mm. after court proceedings and they yeah. uh, sought to mention names and tell them that we're uncomfortable with your comments. They said, if ordinary persons said the things that you said, we would not have issues with it, but you should know better. Mm. I actually didn't think that they had issues with people's opinions, really. I felt with the lawyers, it was, it was in order, yeah. especially with maybe something right. that Dr. Aine said. You, you might call him out because he should know better, especially as a former deputy. I haven't as a, as a seen those deputy, opinions, though. You know, I don't know what they're... The, have you seen those posts? I have not those seen them personally. Posts? So I was, on, I was actually hoping... And I would think that the, the, especially as Ghana Web was cited, and this was all over the place... Was Ghana Web... Yes. The letter that I read, I actually didn't see any media house. Well, apparently, the letter, apparently... It was only copied to two... There were two organizations copied that I saw, which was Indeed. the multimedia group and the despite group, but I didn't see any specific Indeed. media. But mission. in the conversation, it became apparent that especially with online content and some posts, and oh. you know, especially on that platform, it can be pretty scathing. The I remarks, think, you know, can go deep into you. And but well. I think I think then I think that they should have they should have mentioned a specific post so that it will help all of us mm. because I was just thinking. And what if the post around. has been pulled down already? Wouldn't even... But you see, you see the thing, I, and I and I absolutely appreciated what H. Chrissy Premper said, and because now they've drawn our minds to something that most of us didn't even know existed. Yeah. Okay, and I I honestly haven't read anything that mentions any specific judge and sort of tries to run the judge down or that kind of thing. But now I'm looking for it because they, they, they mentioned it in the letter. Mm. And I don't know, there's been lots of commentary on this. We will leave you to make up your mind on, on, on what it is. I really hope that this didn't come, especially this week is the judgment yeah. is the judgment week. And yeah. it gets all of us talking. Before this, everybody had been really cautious. You know, but now there's something for us to talk about. Yeah. You see? Yeah. That's why there's always a communications angle to what the legal people do. So you think about what this could possibly do, particularly in the week when we're going to be delivering yeah. the final verdict, if you like. And I, I don't know. Now everybody will have something to say. Well, it, it's not just about having something to say. It's about where really we're headed in terms of our our legal arrangements in this country. And I'm just thinking that we all should be measured from all angles, as ordinary citizens, as justices of the court, as lawyers. Uh, I don't know. I thought we had done fantastic so far. Listen, but this is the thing, oh, this is the public service, eh? It's, uh, we've gotten to the point where it's, it's just like football where we are all coaches. It happens with every other thing until you find yourself in the spotlight you will not know how intense it is. Yeah. So you have to check where we are again. Yeah. We're in an era where everybody has a say on everything. And we've got different mediums to express that. Look, media people do certain <laughs> things and we are taken on. Oh, Even yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in some instances where we've Sit done it. nothing wrong. Look at election 2020. Yeah, Look at yeah, the yeah. sort of flack. Some, and we did our work. Even other entities that you know, failed in, in many yeah. ways. Look, look, look at the sort of treatment we got. Even footballers. You remember Samoa Janan when he missed that penalty. So nobody is a, a sacred cow. I, I don't think we should have got to this point, really, no. but we have. Another interesting yeah. one, lawyer's wig wearing. Does it matter? And the mm -hmm. Legal Profession Act 1960 at 32 comes in here. Uh, should I express my thoughts on this? I could be held in contempt in, in future, so I'll reserve, be I'll reserve my comments. <laughs> uh, thankfully, there are no interviews nowadays. Don't scandalize the court, Ben, uh, maybe with the it, wig. It might be scandalizing my legal career, so you, I'll leave it here. Uh, COVID-19 pandemic, 43 epicenters vaccinate uh, to Marrow. Uh, Charlie, you have to be careful. <laughs> U.S. Author authorizes Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine. That's, I think, their third one. That's on page nine. And there's this one I want to... I think that is on page uh, 20. Newport tariffs take effect today. You recall the postponement, and now it's taking effect today, Monday, March the 1st, and the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority will begin the implementation of new tariffs for services rendered to shipping lines at the seaports. The new tariff regime applies to containerized cargo for port dues. Steve Doring, 
Crainage and Terminal Handling, that is empty containers. You can check out details from uh, there. Uh, so then you go to the middle spread. No same-sex marriage under my presidency, uh, Kufuado, uh, Mr. President, saying that. And to quote him here, he describes himself as a devout Anglican. And uh, he said this at the installation and enthronement of Most Reverend Dr. Cyril Kwabna Ben Smith as Archbishop of the Anglican Church. So, uh, Presido Kasa, Presido Kasa, Presido Kasa. <laughs> but the point is, did Presido get to the heart of the matter? That's another thing altogether. You might have to decide for yourself whether he, he did that. On the back page, sports, Karela on top, Great Olympics, second, Dreams FC, Mediama following, Ediana Stars following, Asante Kotoko in sixth, and Hearts in seventh. I just had to mention that. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. The Daily Dispatch. Mm. <laughs> you don't get nothing in talk. You just go on. You don't get nothing in talk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I, well... Okay, that really just fashion newspaper. <laughs> Front page, small scale miners caution MPP. Jinapo's appointment can determine MPP's fate in 2024 elections. I've been reading the story, just trying to find, you know, if there was a, a threat that was issued or if there was something more to the headline. It's mm. all around the headline. So, you know, the fact that he's young and uh, we are, we're back here. But, yeah, of course, Galamse is such a big issue. And yeah, they, they've made their presence known following the things that he said uh, during his vetting. Uh, you, we hear them. Uh, motorcycle accidents in 2020. They've got some statistics on it in the paper today. Uh, motorcycle accident contributed 40% of total road accident deaths in 2020. Many dead and scores injured in ghastly crash on Accra Kumasi Highway. This is one of those incidents that. Uh, just, you know, from Friday through to Sunday, I've just been thinking about it. I mean, how is that possible? The two buses loaded with human beings. Ah. And if you, if you see the, the mangled vehicles, it will tell you the impacts of that accident. The vehicles were basically oh, torn apart. Gosh. Ripped apart. Both drivers, you know, dead like that. And apologies, it's very early, but just so you can appreciate the impact of this they carried human beings without their heads yes decapitated people of, with their bodies them, mangled but the buses eh, we need to have another conversation the buses just the buses mm -hmm. And particularly those red buses. I know that they don't all belong to VIP. That's why I don't want to say VIP. I just want to say the red buses. Because I've been on the Kumasi Road there. Eh? Ben. That stretch. When they meet you, they want to overtake. I mean, that's the, that's the mindset. It's like I'm clearing every vehicle that the, I the, meet. There was a picture that what? someone shared, which I saw. And you see someone in an attempt. Two of them, actually, <laughs> back to back, following each other. And you know what happens when and there's an oncoming or onrushing oh. vehicle from the other end. So any mistake, you know what is going to happen. Ah. And then innocent lives are lost. I think they are too reckless. Look, I know people in, you know, ordinary citizens are reckless sometimes in their driving, but these bus drivers are something else. And they feel they have a right. So me, honestly, the Kumase, Accra Kumase stretch, it's been a while since I did it. And I'm very careful. First of all, I, I don't want to travel at night anymore. And I, I, I put in place certain, and I try to sit in the middle. I mean, because you just can't tell. They are so reckless. I have seen them too many times. And I, I kind of scream when they do that. It's like they are racing, you know? And they meet you. As soon as they, they, are, they get behind you, they want to overtake you. And it feels like you're disturbing them, like, Charlie, clear yourself. It really doesn't matter what is even ahead of you. Hmm. And this is not a dual carriage road, remember? This is... Gee. One lane. Oh, we have to do something. It, it has to be specific to this issue. We've been talking the dual carriage and we're mixing the conversation. But the way the bus drivers drive, that's the problem. It's a problem, actually. It is a problem. Ben, Let's check out the Daily Guide now. I am done. I am done. Gay marriage is off limits, Nana declares. And um, Fidelity Bank, Kiddy promote digital banking. Accept Supreme Court verdict, Peace Council says so, and World Bank denies Alex Mould claims. So let me just take a look at that one on page nine. And it says, um, 
So the World Bank has denied claims that it imposed four independent power producers on Ghana during the tenure of the NDC government led by John Mahama. The claim was made by Alex Mould, former chief executive officer of the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation during the Mahama administration. Now, Mr. Mould claimed in an interview last week that four IPPs constructed under the Mahama government were in fulfillment of a World Bank condition for the $750 million World Bank guarantee in respect of the ENI-led Sankofa Jinyame gas project. So usually when it, these matters arise, you begin to ask yourself, where does the truth really lie? The Daily Guide this morning, um, I don't want to say spinning, but weaving it in a certain direction. I want to believe Alex Mould also has some other you know, details that would spin it in a different direction. But what exactly is the truth? Uh, in entertainment on page eight, allow Ekufuado to govern if Yashua to LGBTQI group, and it appears the conversation isn't going anywhere. Confusion rocks Chinese football. That's on the back page. You can check out why. Done with the Daily Guide. All right, just real quick before we go online, the Business and Financial Times. There's a story says, that says that the FDA is reviewing two more vaccines. Uh, four stories on page two. Uh, and the Food and Drugs Authority has confirmed it is currently reviewing two more vaccines submitted by global pharmaceutical companies for emergency authorization and use in Ghana to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, this is the chief executive officer telling journalists uh, that the authority will soon come out with its decision on the yet-to-be-named two vaccines and assure that it will be in the best interest of the country. That's the story I wanted to pick from the Business and Financial Times. Of course, they've got plenty of business stories that you can, you know, grab. So I'll wrap up with the headlines from the Finder newspaper, and then we can actually uh, do this birthday wish and go online. Uh, Zipline UPS partner government to deliver first COVID-19 vaccines to health facilities. And uh, 343,264 placed in SHS, 151,266 to do self-placement. That's according to the Ghana Education Service. COVID-19 vaccine does not harm fertility, Dr. Dacosta Abwaji says so. I had just had to re-echo that. So let's quickly do this birthday wish and then we can go online. And uh, this one says, please wish P.W. Constable uh, Stephanie, Stephanie, actually, manager of National Headquarters, Accra Communications Department, a happy birthday. And this is from Constable. Okay. Um, you know, when I saw Constable for a moment, I was <laughs> thinking. So that is from Constable uh, to you. We wish you a very happy birthday. Uh, it's from birthday. Constable, Constable Asamwa Bright. Bright. Yeah. Yes. I've got another one. It's to a very special woman, uh, Mrs. Stella Max Fugger. It's your birthday today from all of us here. Oh. And of course, also management and staff of West Side School. Ablekuma Agape to you. Auntie Stella Max Fugger, enjoy your birthday today. I guess it's also from your husband. <laughs> mm. Yeah, let's do my job like Lovey that. Love you, darling. I like that. <laughs> All right, here's what's on my joy online today. Making COVID, COVID vaccines will not alter your... Oh, taken, actually. COVID vaccines will not alter your DNA. Trust FDA. Is it DNA? I hope I got that right. Yes, it is DNA. Okay. Trust the FDA. Yeah, yeah. says the president in his latest address. More of what the president had to say uh, on LGBTQ. Withdraw Australian High Commissioner. Danish ambassador's letters of credence, Sam George, to Kufuado. Of course, GS publishes placements of 2020 BC candidate. Same sex marriage will never happen. And my president, Kufuado, reveals national vaccine de uh, deployment plan, which determines who gets vaccinated and when. We're working to develop and manufacture vaccines. Okay. Uh, conduct of judges. What erode confidence in judiciary, not people's opinions, according to Professor H. Kwesi Premper of the CDD. Well, lots of other stories on myjournline.com. Now they are making me want to go and look for the opinions and read. But you see, one thing though, not many people, 
read opinions. That's also something for people to yeah. think about. Not many people read opinions because if you go to the website, they've got the news, then entertainment, business, blah, 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 the features and the opinions. Not many people read opinions unless you draw the attention to. And now you have. And, and, but usually you would see that some stories, when you take a look at them, you see the comments on them and all of that. And, I don't read realize all. there are quite a... No, with, I don't with, read with the comments. I intentionally, some of them, okay. I go and I read. Don't read. And I, I agree, they can be scathing. But so, I mean, I don't read because there why, are haters all attention? over. There are people who will like you, there are people who will not like you. Mm. There are people who are just there, they're waiting for a story to come and then they will share their opinion. It doesn't matter to me. Like, it really doesn't matter what you say. I live my life. If you want to listen and read what everybody says, you know, most of the time, the people who are saying not so nice things about you, like, they are nowhere close to you. And you're paying attention to them, and you're crying because of that? Hello, Ben. Live your life. What's it? And <laughs> on that note of this beautiful sermon delivered on a Monday morning by Mama Vio Wiswabwadi, we shall cede our position and allow the sports to, to come through with sports. That's up next. Do stay. Hello, good morning, and welcome to the AM Sports with me, Oreko. I'm for what a weekend it was, uh, starting off from Ghana here. We're at the 107th Ghana Premier League meeting between Asante Kotoko and Hartafolk produced no winner on Sunday after the two teams missed the penalty. Kotoko failed to convert their spot kick in the first half, whilst Hartafolk missed theirs in the second department as the match ended in a goalless draw at the Accra Sports Stadium. Both teams still sit on the same point on the Ghana Premier League table, moving from 23 to 24 points. Remember, Karela are on 28 points on top of the Ghana Premier League. But let's move forward to Africa now and still of Ghanaian interest, where the Black Satellites will play Gambia later today in the semi final of the ongoing Wafu Under 17 Cup of Nations. It will be a repeat of the last group fixture where the national under 20 team lost 2 1. However, Coach Abdul Karim Zito is adamant the semi final encounter would be a different game. Well, seriously, uh, this is a different platform, unlike the uh, group stage. This when you are able to qualify, it means you are going for the ultimate. And then the two objectives of why we left Ghana to this AFCON is one, to qualify for the World Cup, even though there's some, there's some clause against that. So I've qualified for the World Cup. Indeed, whether it will come on or not, only Allah knows. Then two, now I'm preparing myself for the ultimate. And the ultimate is to win the cup for my country. You understand me? So, Definitely the attitude in this game will never be like the attitude we play during the uh, uh, group stage. All we have to do is to change the character and the attitude and then try to make amendments on what we did wrong when we play Gambia. Ghana beat Cameroon in the quarterfinal on penalties uh, to reach the semi-final stage. And for the Gambia, they beat Central African Republic by three goals to nil to reach the semi-final stage. Uh, certainly, that's promised a mouth-watering encounter between the Black Satellites and Gambia later today. But let's come back to Ghana, where Youth and Sports Ministry designate Mustafa Yusuf says he is committed to making the public finding of investigatory institutions on the 2018 Commonwealth Games visa scandal. He said this during his vetting last Thursday. The issue of visa scandal is very worrying, and it is no good image for our country, especially what's happened in Australia. So given the opportunity, I know the GFA, uh, the GOC, the, that's the Ghana Olympic Committee, is normally in charge and it has to do with accreditation. I know the, the, the processes, per, per the briefing I got, the processes leading to the Australia uh, scandal is that they normally have a list called a long list and also a, a short list. The long list was normally will be prepared first for the host uh, federation or the organizing country for the organizers. 
to be able to give accreditation for athletes to be able to participate in the tournament. In the Australian case, instead of waiting for the shortlist or the final list to be submitted, they issued accreditation to most of these, uh, all the names on the long list. So given the opportunity, I will engage the GOC and the National Sports Authority and ensure that, and even the host nation embassy in Ghana, so that we'll be able to ensure that only vetted athletes or sportsmen and women are issued with visas, so that we don't find ourselves damaging our image in this direction. So will you be willing to make public the investigation report on the Australian visa scandal, for example? I will follow through to see the agencies doing this investigation, if they are concluded. Maybe there, there is the current, I don't know the status of the investigation. So if, yes, the investigation is concluded, yes, it's a public interest matter, and the report should be make, made public. That's what I think. Well, our next conversation is with the National Coordinator for the Computerized School Selection and Placement System, Max Sassumens, and we're talking about the placement of our school children uh, who are going into senior high school and some of the technical schools. The placement has been done, but not everybody has been placed. Uh, Mr. Max Sassumens, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for your time here on the AM Show. Morning, Mike. Okay, great. Yes, it's a pleasure talking. Okay, great. And, and uh, my greetings to your listeners. Sure. So, can you give us the exact figure of the students who have been uh, placed automatically by the system? Okay, thank you very much. Before maybe answer that question, I have to actually go, go run with you some rudiments that some rudiments before maybe I come to your specific question. Thank you. <coughs> At CSSPS, we received about 531,453 uh, uh, file data from YX as those people who sat for the exam, as regular candidates who sat for the exam. Out of these, out of these regular candidates, 9,342 uh, candidates could not write their exam. Therefore, we couldn't work out with them. Out of these, out of these, about 422,111 were the final figure that we have of the regular country. And we had about 2,240 students who wrote as a private candidate. So if you, if you add this figure to the regular candidate, we actually came at 523,933. So these were the exact figures that we worked out with, with the placement. Now, after the placement, after the placement, um, 41,359 people were disqualified. They were disqualified as a result of they have, inco they have incomplete results. When I say incomplete results, either they did not take part in their mathematics or English, or they had nine in mathematics or nine in English, or they had nine in both English math. So these were the, the basis as which we disqualified them. 482,574,000 people qualified as they are the people who out of this 523,933 482,574 people qualified to be placed. Okay. And now, to be placed. Okay. And now, out of these, I think about 333,000 people actually qualified. That is, and that is, were able to get their placement. So, 68.5 people had their placement. That is automatic placement. And as a result of this, 151,266 people are awaited to go for self-placement. So these were the figures of the statistics behind the placement this year. 
Okay, so l let me let me understand this. You said one hundred and fifty one thousand two hundred and twenty six. Uh, two hundred and sixty six. Representing thirty one point thirty five percent of those people that are going to be Could not be matched with any of their choices. Yes, they did get in, or they couldn't get any of their five choices. Is it that they chose, but they were not qualified enough for the for the schools that they had selected? Is it that? Please, can you go? Can you go by the question again? Okay, so I want I want to understand. They chose the schools, but their results could not get them placed. Yes, Is that they it? chose the school, but they would be a result could not get them to any of the five schools that they chose. Okay, so what's the option for such people? Such people, you are required to go to the self-placement model. So the self-placement model, the available schools that you go, you can see them. Then you choose from that pool of schools. Those schools that vacancy exist. Okay. When you were speaking earlier, you also did mention that you disqualified some persons. Yes. Yeah. What does I, that I think, mean? I think I explained that. Disqualification means either the candidate has nine in English or nine in mathematics, mm -hmm. or, he had, or he or she had incomplete results. When I tell you, when I ask you about, when, when I explain about uh, incomplete results, it means whether you did not take, you did not, you, you did not take, in either English or mathematics or any of your four uh, mm. core subjects. Okay. That means you have been disqualified. Okay. My yes. question yes. is, do they also have an option of self-placement? No. That is not the main reason you're disqualified. Either you go and make sure that, either you go and make sure that, I mean, you go and write, next year you are given opportunity to go and write for next year exam. So that's a private can candidate. And make sure that you abide by the rules of the game. Okay. Well, well please, kindly just remind us of that figure again, the number that you've it's disqualified. 41,359. Okay. All right. Uh, so, you know, we opened your page. So what it means is that if you've been placed, how would you know where you've been placed? Oh, so if you check it, the school that you've been placed will, uh, will come on your, on your form. So then you uh, then you fill your enrollment form on, on online. You can print it and fill it online, or you can fill it and take it to the school. Is this still done through the computerized school selection system? What you have online? What you what you, what, what you yes is after the the process went by your email. Let me let me walk let me walk you through the mm -hmm. process. Um, when you buy your email. You go to cssbs.com.ca. After after going to on that on that domain, it will give you maybe your e voucher number. Then it will give you your student number. The student number you add two zero to eight. That is two zero to your ten digit number. Then it will take you to where uh, maybe the school that you were paid. So if then if you could if you couldn't get get in any of your schools, the, 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 the same system would redirect you to self-placement model. Then you go and choose the schools that are available. Okay. Mr. Sassumas, I have to speak up a bit for me. I'm losing you. You are losing me. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm driving. That's the main reason why. You cannot hear me. Okay. But I hope that you're not distracted, though. I'm not distracted. Either. Okay. Great. Yeah. What I'm trying to tell you is that you go and buy your e-voucher. You buy your e-voucher. If you, then you go to cssbs.com.gh. You go to that domain. Where a face page will, will turn out. Then say your e voucher number. After your e voucher number, your ID number. Then it will take you to a site. When be where your school maybe you were placed. Either you were placed or you were not placed. If you were, if you were placed, you print your your you print your uh, your form out. After printing your form out, you can fill your enrollment form online. Or you can print your enrollment form. Then you send it to your school. Okay. After sending it to your school, it tells you two things. Either those people who had school or those people who did not get school. If you did not get a school, then that means that you, are, you must do self-placement. And you go on the, the same portal of the self-placement to redirect 
after the direct you, there are some available schools that you see per your grade that you had. Then you must also know that the, um, the self placement is divided into two schools with boarding vacancy and schools with day vacancy. You must be very wary of that when you are choosing that. So, choose any of your others, then it also proceed after you have you have successfully selected your school. It will also print, you print your enrollment form, you fill it online, send it to this for you to, for you to be enrolled. How many schools can you choose? Oh, just one. You cannot choose more than for that one. As soon as you select that, you select it and you are successful. That you are successful. That is the school that you have chosen. But let me re-emphasize on this one. This time around the self-placement, you can do it as many times as you want. So the time maybe tell that so we give you a date of which week you cannot do so again. Can you so does it mean that all those who have been placed, they've been placed in schools that they themselves selected? Yes. That is that is what we call it automatic placement system. There is no human intervention. It is your merit that is have actually got to you that school. Okay. Um, our viewers uh, can send us questions. If you've got questions, we've got a WhatsApp number that we'll put on the screen. Kindly send your questions. Um, I would be very glad, you know, because of the exigence, so a lot of things are happening to me at other, other, other radio stations. So, uh, yeah, sure. That. I'm just going to make a snappy. I'll be, I'm, I'll be very glad to send if uh, be one of these is I can walk into your studio and explain a lot of things. Yeah, but let me ask you this. Uh, can you change a school if you've been placed? Can you change? If you've been placed, whether automatic or whether you are self placed. Yes. I just want to know whether automatic. So, or automatic. for instance, if it's automatic, can you change? No, automatic, you, can, you cannot. You cannot. You cannot change your school. So, how about self placement? Self placement, you can change as, as, as many times you want. Okay. Uh, and uh, just. Okay, so how, how, how much time do you have so that I'll know? Which one we can take just before you go, before we wrap you, up? You, you, you just ask, just ask me. Excuse me? You see, ask me a question that, that you want me to ask. Okay. So how, how would you know you've been disqualified? How would you know? that The, the, the system will tell you that um, 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 because of so-so and so-so and so, you've not been able, um, uh, you, are, you were not successful or you've been disqualified. And I said, you, we are trying to also download um, maybe... The dis uh, reasons why uh, you were disqualified, as I told you, there are three, three or four reasons that one is incomplete results, two whether you had English, mathematics, English or math nine, or you had both nine, or you had incomplete results. Okay, somebody's uh, yes, I'm listening. To you. Somebody's asking if transfer is allowed. I don't know if it's the same as what I asked you in terms of can you change transfer? Yes. <laughs> We, are, we have not even we have not even spoken about even uh, you even get admission yet, and you are, uh, they are so they want to know about transfer. Transfer is not allowed unless maybe you have a genuine case, and even the transfer is not even for form one, for only form two, unless you have a genuine case that maybe that one is not even done by me, it's done by neither general candidate. Okay, here's what somebody is asking. It says my ward had aggregate ten and was placed in a technical school, even though she chose it, but was offered technical program, which is not, which she's not interested in. Can something be done about this? Um, well, I think once that you have chosen it, and maybe we don't have any other alternative for you to, because you chose it yourself. And one of the things that, that is the main reason why I always say that, whenever, 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 whenever you 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 you, you have chosen a school, that's the main reason why we allow students to choose a school. That at least you'll be able to give you what. I think the issue here is that she chose the school, all right, but the course she's been offered is not what she's that interested means, in. It's automatic placement, so he chose that that course that's for him or herself. Okay, this because one if says. You didn't choose it, I wouldn't. That's for automatic. If you didn't choose it, I, I couldn't. We couldn't have given it to you. The computer couldn't have given it to you. There's somebody who's also complaining that she got into a school that she did not select. Is that possible? It's not correct. It's not correct. Sorry, it's not correct. But 
is if you look at the fellows who look at his choice form, choice form, all the choice, your choice form, all the schools that you selected, you selected have been duly spelled out, has been actually outlined. It's not correct. So, 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 please, when that is for in computer, can we call something giga, giga, um, um, garbage in, garbage out. Mm. Okay, this one says, my sister had grade 15, but did not get any of the choices. Is that a disqualified candidate? He's not a, he's not a dis disqualified, he's a self-placement candidate. Okay, so I guess he, he has to go through the process again and do self-placement. Yeah. Okay, this one says, the headmaster of the school, my junior brother completed, changed the schools we selected without our knowledge. How could he do that? Picking about four C schools. These are, the, these are some of the problems that we face. You know, and so some of the, that's why I always educate parents that they, they, should, be, they should collaborate with, the, uh, with, with their work to ensure that at least in choosing the school, they get it right. Mm. Uh, this one also says, uh, what is the basis for getting your first choice schools? What is the basis? It's by, it's, it's by your merit. One, by your performer. Two, the kind of space is available, av available, available. Because there are a lot of schools that actually have smaller spaces. So if you have a smaller space, it's done with the competition over there. It's actually very high. But if you have big spaces, that means the competition becomes less. And it depends upon the performance of that school, even by program by program. So those are the base that they can get your school. Okay. Somebody also wants to know how often they can use the voucher. I'm trying to look for details of that particular message. I, I think the voucher is unlimited. Excuse me? It's unlimited. It's unlimited. Okay, great. Uh, when are they going to school? Somebody's asking. I don't know if that's in your 10th domain. 10th of March. 10th, 10th of March. 10th, you said? Yes, 10th of March. That's 10th, next week Wednesday. Next yeah. week Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, somebody says got grade 12, but no placement for him. I guess that's self-placement. Pay your explanation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some people are complaining they cannot access the portal. Is the placement released actually? Yes, it has, right? Yeah, the placement has been released, but I think that maybe it depends upon the reception that a person is working because as of now, I have a quite number more than about more than the 100,000 people or 200,000 people who are on the line as, 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 as I'm talking about. I'm talking about. So you can actually see that uh, there's a lot of people on the, on the line and mm. the person should look at it and uh, maybe they turn it to me. Okay. Somebody wants to know if the disqualification criteria of nine in English or mathematics was used last year. Yes, last year too. Okay. Uh, somebody also says, I, I had a school, I don't like it. Can I do self-placement? <laughs> you had a school that you don't like. That definitely means that you chose it yourself, but we cannot, we cannot do otherwise. Okay. Uh, not even in, in an emergency situation? No, please. Okay. Somebody's asking how can I buy voucher for my children's school placement using Momo? Uh, using Momo? <laughs> yes. I think uh, it was something that was uh, after, but I think that we will think about So I it. guess maybe they can Google and try and learn. I'm sure it will yeah. be somewhere. This one says, I heard there will be 30% automatically days student for every school. How true is that? There's what? Somebody, somebody says... Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That it was rumored that about 30% will be automatically placed as day students in every so, school. But... but this, this, this student is a compulsory, your, 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 your fifth choice, that's compulsory. Everybody must do the compulsory. So where, where is it coming from? That 30% of the students will be made as a student. Somebody also wants to know how she can change her daughter's placement from day to boarding. <laughs> uh, sorry, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Please, your name again. Sorry, I um, uh, my um, name my name is Mama V. Oh, Mama V. Okay, Mama V. Yes, ma. It's not possible for you to change your view from. Okay, and I, I guess you started with a laughter because these are the concerns, uh, th these are the issues that you had warned parents of before the placements. 
Yes, yes. I, that is the main reason why. Mm. So that's why it's not possible for my mother. Okay. All right. So uh, if you entered wrong details in terms of you chose the school and you were not careful with it, uh, plus the course, there's nothing you can do at this point. No, because we give them that validity of time. We give them that ample time for them to do, um, to, to, to ensure that at least we get about three months. Choosing of the school, we get about three months. More than even three months. For them to rectify every mistake that they want to do. But, you know, human nature. Mm. Okay. Uh, this one says, can I check the school on phone with a short code 1060? Oh, yeah. They can check your school. 1060? No, I think that option is not available anymore. Okay. This one says, if you're placed automatically, what's the way forward? Can you go to the school today for prospectus? Well, it depends upon uh, maybe the school. Some, some of the schools are... They, they, they are they, they are already uh, uh, they are ready so, so but you can you can either way do it online you can also present when you present just when you are ready you'll be called so don't worry at all as soon as you can you can just just go to your school this, okay the enrollment for this one says, my junior sister went to GS, uh, uh, went for GS forms of placement, and the reply they, they gave her was, there is free SHS, so they don't do that placement again. She completed last year. Uh, if, it is, if the message is not clear, I guess if yes, you can... I think, I, think I, 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 I understand the import of the question. Okay, and great. Just trying to say maybe he wants to change the school, he wants to repeat. You know, the free SHS has allowed you, it's only giving you only three years for you to complete. It doesn't give you four years. If you repeat, that means you are, you are, you are, you are going through the school for four years. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Mm, okay. But it, 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 allows only, it allows you for three years to complete. Therefore, that's the main reason why we discourage people from, uh, let's say, they just want to do a repeat, repeat, repeat and those kind of things. So, so would you be a fee-paying student then, if you insist on repeating? Well, I think that one it will depend on the on the on the money. Mm. Uh, this, for this one is strictly, uh, I'm strictly about it and um, business here, so this will depend on, on the money. Okay, now let let's just finally end with some administrative uh, stuff. So, schools can't charge you, right, uh, for for you for your child being placed in their school. No, they can't charge you. They Excuse me, Mark, you. You, were, you were rather low. You see, no, they can't charge you. They can charge you, okay. Uh, and all these students are expected to go to school on the 10th of March. Yes, on the 10th of March, all of them are school. Is there extra time for those who may not, because there are some people still complaining that they can have access. I think some people in the northern region particularly say that they can't ac um, have access. That's the main reason I'm trying to tell them that they should actually check uh, their, they should check, they should check their, uh, what do you call it, their, they should check their, uh, uh, their network. They should check the network. Okay. Yes. So I guess my question is, will there I'm be... I'm talking about a network. I'm talking about internet. Internet. Yes. So some of them, they don't have... Yeah. Their yeah, okay. internet level is actually very poor. Okay. But so... Our, 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 our system is robust and working perfect and working well. Uh, will there be some extra time given to persons who may have challenges accessing so that if they can't go to school on the 10th? Oh. We have our today today up on on to come. And by then, I know most of even by even two, three or four days, most of all those who want to affect our system will be able to affect. Is there a time frame? So for instance, if I have been automatically placed but I don't do the follow up within a certain time, would I miss that placement? Would I lose it? I am um, for now for now we have not got any deadline for now. Okay. Just finally, Mark, because we can't have all the conversation right now. Uh, Cassandra did say to us last week that you were setting up some call centers. Uh, so well. where can uh, we find that, those? That, yes, uh, I, I think uh, the numbers have actually been, been put out there. 
I think we have more than 100 Sita call center, more than 100 Sita call center. And we, we are there to solve the challenges for candidates or parents who have problems. If the problems are technical, what we do is we give you 24 hours and we will call you back. Uh, call you back for, we will call you back or reach you out through a text message or through a call so that uh, your, 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 your challenges, uh, will be, your feedback, feedback will be given to you. So is, right it, there, yes. is this a decentralized system? Can you find your call centers in all the regions or you've got... You know, we have all, we have all the regional PRO, district uh, wide examination officers, all of them are involved. But as, as, as I'm talking, it is centralized in Accra which has about more than 100 seat call center. But all the all our original PROs are involved. Okay. Do you readily have the numbers so you can give it out? Or this is something that um, we can share a bit later sorry, on? Sorry, that uh, maybe the numbers maybe have escaped me. But I think it has been put there. But if later you want to call me and have it, I will just, I will just give it to you. Okay. All right, we'll try and do that. I'm still get, getting lots of messages dropping. Uh, so I guess this <laughs> is still... Mama, 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 you, can see, you can see a lot of calls that are dropped now as a result of talking to you. Yes, so, so uh, uh, I'm just going to... I, 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 I hope you wouldn't want to hang me up. Oh, no, no. I was actually going to... Um, I was saying that to wrap up and say that we need to have uh, a conversation later on because people still have yes, concerns. Yes, um, um, myself, yeah. but maybe, uh, maybe let's give me one a day or two. I'll come to your, your studio and explain a lot of issues out there. Okay. And um, I, even I blame the issues that are about raising this, this morning have been able to answer most of the, the um, issues that mm -hmm. people will be having. Yeah. So I think that it will be, it will be now. But uh, if actually time comes in, Please let me come to your street. I want to invite one of these days to come to your street. Yeah, so sure. Just the last thing. Can the school itself decide to change the program for you? The school? Yes. Um, for what I know, uh, for what I know, one that you have, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you have been giving a school as a program, it is not to be changed, but maybe it could be maybe one internal arrangement as a result of existence that needs Maybe that matters with their own reasons. Maybe we'll do that for you. But for for CSS players or Madonna, you are not supposed to take the program. Okay. All right, Mac. I am not so selfish, so I'll let you go so other people can have a piece of you as well. Uh, Mac Sasu Mensah is the national coordinator for the computerized school uh, selection and placement system, and he's been answering questions, bothering. Uh, on the placement, as uh, as you know, a lot of people have issues, and we've been receiving lots of them. Hopefully, he's been able to handle most of the questions that you've sent through. So that will be it for now. But of course, we will definitely continue with this conversation with the challenges that you are experiencing. Up next, though, we have a conversation on the LGBTQI. It's a still very much developing conversation, and yesterday. Uh, in the president's address, uh, which is, no, not on the COVID-19. This was an earlier uh, speech that he gave as he visited a church. He made the statement that uh, he was not going to legalize uh, homosexual marriages in Ghana. Uh, but those who wanted the president to speak on this matter, question is, is this enough? Is this what they wanted the president to say? Uh, has he put this matter to rest now? Can they sleep and know that this is not going to happen? Benjamin Akako has that conversation coming up next here on our show. To progress and prosperity. I've said this before. And let me conclude to stress again that it will not be under the presidency of Nana Abdan Kutakufuwa the same sex marriage. <laughs> the same sex marriage will be legalized in that. It will never happen.
Let me repeat. It will never happen. <laughs>
society. What is your take on that? Maybe the tail end of the problem addressed, but do we still have a problem? Yes, well, we still have a problem. Um, this is a statement that has been, it has to be fixed in law. Um, we have a law which is not expansive enough, which is not comprehensive enough to um, criminalize same sex um, with other related, um, what we consider as um, aberrant or deviant uh, sex orientations. Um, our law now is not expansive and comprehensive enough to capture all those. So we will still call on the president to move the, 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 the response um, a step further by urgently uh, causing a review of the law to make it all encompassing and comprehensive to capture any other aberrant or objectionable sex orientation, um, um, which is likely to become part and parcel of our, our lives. Remember, remember the infinitude of the list of orientations we are talking about here. We began with LGBT. Now we are talking of the, the Q, talking of the I, talking of the A, and a plus to it. What it means is that the scope of this kind of practice is not known to us now and is going to continue. From our point of view as Muslims, it is an attack, attack on the very root of our family life. So if we allow this to get expanded, it's not a matter of human right, but it's a matter of something that is that is dangerous to society in general. It is dangerous to society once anything that attacks the very root of family life and family values. It is not a matter for fam for, 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 for what you call it, uh, human, human right. And that's why we think that the law must be made tighter to cover all other related homosexuality and all other related sex orientations that we consider as very dangerous to the very um, values of our family um, life. So government must really come out urgently and cause a review of the law to criminalize all other related sex orientations. Let me come to Dr. Ofori now on that same beat. Now, your coalition has been at the forefront together with other groups to ask for the removal of any ambiguity when it comes to our laws on homosexuality or any gay practices. Do you feel that ambiguity has been removed, so to speak, with the president coming so emphatically to say what he has in recent times? And I'm addressing this to Dr. Ofori. Good morning and thank you. Um, good morning to your viewers as well. And Sheikh, good morning. Um, morning. Just to follow up uh, from where he left off. Uh, first of all, um, yes, we, we congratulate the president for reiterating that point. This is the second time, uh, I think the first time he went to Cyprian Anglican Church and made that statement when the CSC was being rolled out. Because we had seen the connection between the CSC and the LGBTQ. At that time, it wasn't apparent. Now, this is the b bottom line. When it comes to what the, state, the president has said, it, it, it is nothing new with regards to the international arena. Because in 2016, 47 judges, they went to Strasbourg, France, to demand human rights at the International Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. 47 independent judges were asked to review their case, their, their request. And they voted unanimously against it, that it cannot be treated as a human right. So the president is basically reiterating what the international uh, uh, court has said. Now, at the time he made this statement, you had a U.S. president who was against homosexuality, who was not promoting this. Now you have a Catholic, unfortunately, a Catholic president of the United States who put his hand on the Holy Bible to swear the oath of office, who has turned around in an opposite behavior to go against the written code of God's law that he puts his hands on. This is an abominable thing uh, for us as Christians and for our brothers, uh, uh, the Muslims. Just two, day, two days ago, British Columbia sentenced two Canadians to jail for practicing polygamy. My Muslim brother here will tell you that in Africa, polygamy is not illegal. I'm a Christian. We in the New Covenant 
say it is not acceptable. He said the two shall become one. But Abraham practiced polygamy. David, a man after God's own heart, practiced polygamy. Six wives, ten concubines. Our dear uh, br brothers, the Muslims, practiced uh, polygamy. Um, um, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Speaker, uh, MP, uh, what's his name? That popular, um, um, uh, 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 what do you call it? Member of Parliament. Uh, forgotten his name. He is open about his polygamous relationship. He's married to many wives and has about 22 children. He it, said this publicly. Is, isn't the member of parliament for Asin Central you speak of, Kennedy Japong? Kennedy Japong, thank you very much. So <laughs> we are just making the point that look at the West. What they abhor, they've gone beyond rhetoric and put in penal code that bans this practice. Completely. And they are putting people into jail. And they are aware. Canada is aware. US is aware. Europe is aware. That's why we are angry with the European Union and the, the ambassadors who knowingly are going against what they are aware is repugnant and unacceptable and a taboo in our society. Let, let me just interject here, here uh, if, if I may. And don't be aware that this is not acceptable. So if they have gone the extra mile to put laws in place to to, to back up what is a taboo to them. We must do likewise. And so that's what Sheikh is saying. The president must deepen his commitment and, 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 and show to the world that this is not going to start. It is not going to work in this country. In North America or Europe, they will never give you the space to sit with anybody to talk about the merits of polygamy or the merits of female circumcision. It's a non-starter. What more, so what more do I you feel? To, please, let me just land. I want to make the point that, please, we are appealing to the journalists of this nation, the fourth estate. That's what we call you. You have the judiciary, the, uh, sorry, the executive, the, the legislature, and the judiciary, the first three estates of government, and you are the fourth estate, as you are, you are described across the world. Please, don't give them that space. They are basically looking for legitimacy. They are looking for the space to talk, you wouldn't have to give them any platform. We are not against them, as we have told you. We are against the practice and the evil that it brings to our society. It is destroying the human capital of our youth. Okay. This is the greatest asset Africa has. Why are you exposing them to this wickedness? When children are young as five and wants to, want to think about how to grow and mature into adulthood, you want to teach them how to masturbate? That's what the CSE was trying to do. And that is the LGBTQ. And we have told you it's a population dynamic. These guys have disobeyed the laws of God. God said, be fruitful and multiply and dominate. They have been going for one to two children per family at the maximum three. And their population growth rate is 1.3 on average. You need a minimum of 2.1 to sustain your culture. If these trends continue in 20 to 25 years, North America and Europe will be dominated by non-white immigrants. They are afraid of that. This, nobody is talking to the issue from this dimension. And we need to appreciate that they are coming to us, forcing this thing because they feel threatened that they don't have the requisite population to, 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 to sustain their culture. And so how do they go about it? Try okay. and suppress other populations that are growing. It's so, not so, going to so, work. So per and what you're saying, uh, let's, let's move the conversation forward, Dr. Furry. So per what yes, you're saying, saying... The president must seize the opportunity going forward because we have heard this already. We have heard this before. There's nothing new. And now that you have uh, the, the president of the most powerful country coming out boldly to say that he is going to back up these people, he is going to give them preferential treatment when it comes to visa, he can carry all of them away. We don't mind. But as long as this society is concerned, LGBTQ shall not fly. And we want to seize the opportunity to tell the ambassadors to behave properly. It is an insult. They have told us, they have given us a sign. They will not tolerate polygamy. They are putting people in jail. Why do they come here to try and force us to let, tolerate that which is abominable to us? Let, the let, president let's must proceed, seize the opportunity no. to get the laws in place to ban this thing completely, as Uganda has done. Okay, so let's proceed. I just wanted you to go back and address two matters very quickly before I come back to uh, Sheikh. So first of all, we've had the instance of the Australian High Commission, uh, Commissioner, I should say, at the opening of this office uh, for LGBTQI plus uh, members of our society who 
who has come under the radar. You made mention of ambassadors and the rest. First of all, in his case, what do you feel should be done? And secondly, you've spoken about more being done by Mr. President. What more should Nanado Dankwa Kufuado do in this respect after he said what he did on Saturday? So two questions very quickly. What should happen to people, ambassadors doing this? And what, should, uh, what more should uh, the president do? Thank you very much. The ambassadors know what they have done. No ambassador can go to a country without knowing what they like and what they don't like. Mm. So they have done this on purpose. They must come to the general public as they went to the public to support the LGBTQ and apologize to us because they have insulted our integrity and our cultural uh, sanctity and dignity. So okay. that's what they must do. Otherwise, they must be kicked out of the country. Secondly, with the president, he must seize this opportunity to leave a legacy for this country. He must seize this opportunity to supervise in, to put it into place the laws that ban homosexuality outright. It is a no-no for our society. Whether you go to the traditional angle or the Muslim angle or the Christian angle, why should we entertain it by saying we are not going to legalize? It's not about whether we legalize or not. It's about banning it completely. Because now we have entered a, a, a state where the most powerful uh, uh, head of state of all nations is trying to bully his way through. He says he's going to fly the flag. We talked to the chiefs. They said over their dead bodies. They said Accra will not be desecrated by flying a flag that is a taboo to their culture. The president must engage the chiefs because this is where they stand. They are part of our coalition. And the feedback we are bringing from them to, to, to the whole uh, nation and to the government that this is a desecration. If the American government dares to fly the flag of the LGBTQ in Ghana, because this is our land. In our culture, we excommunicate those who do this. Now, we as a Christian body and the national coalition with the Muslims and the traditional group have established a comprehensive team. We have doctors, we have pastors, we have Muslims, we have psychologists, we have psychiatrists helping these people. We are helping them. We have so far helped 600 homosexuals and lesbians to turn away from this thing. You've seen the clip going around of the damage that it causes to the anal uh, canal, the, the, the anal incontinence, and all the massive bills, expenditures of health that will come to the nation. We can't afford that. We need that money to do proper development, not treat people with anal incontinence. And all so right. it is a decision that we want the president to take seriously. It is enough. We don't want to hear more of we won't legalize, we won't legalize. That's not, we have gone beyond that point. At this stage, we want to ban this thing completely. And we are pleading with the president and parliament to take this matter up seriously and move in the same direction as Uganda has done. Right. Now, let me come to you, Sheikh. And I, I may do a little bit of reading here, but the law is clear on what constitutes unnatural carnal knowledge. And again, it is stated when, you know, we, we actually focus on human rights. And I'll just take a look here. It explicitly states every person in Ghana, whatever his race, place of origin, political opinion, color, religion, creed or gender, shall be entitled to the fundamental human rights and freedoms of the individual. And this is entrenched in our constitution. I bring that up because we're talking gender matters here you know, the LGBTQI plus. Do you feel in any way that this does not border on human rights, as some of these activists uh, are saying? And if not, don't they have a right to their preference? What do you think, Sheikh? Yeah, like, like I've mentioned, I mean, I mean, every freedom has got its, um, its limitations. And laws are made within the context of the values of any country and as a nation there are certain basic values that identify us as a Ghanaians and it does it doesn't it doesn't really it's something that we don't we do not compromise actually that is the, that's the reason why we are talking the way um we are we are doing so every freedom has got a limitation but this kind of freedom this kind of freedom attacks the very foundation of our social life that is rooted in marriage that is rooted in marriage that is why in our belief as Muslims, the pairing of male and a female has got something to do with God's natural order. 
the pairing of the male and the female has something to, to do with God's natural order that ensures that there will be continuous procreation. And, 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 and that is something that, so anything that confronts this kind of natural order, that's why if you look at the law, the law says that it is unnatural. It is a, it's a deviation from the natural scheme of things as put in place by, by God. So um, that freedom, it, it's like just saying that um, armed robbers, that is, that is the choice of their way of life. Uh, prostitutes, that is the choice of their way of life. And so we must give, give them legal and institutional endorsement of a life that we think that can really pollute our moral space and attack the very foundation of our family life. Such laws cannot be viewed within the context of freedom. Um, I, I think that that is the way we should we should view we should view, view this. Um, it's a very dangerous trend. Like my brother said from the Christian faith, Uganda has done it. In fact, Nigeria is passing a bill. In fact. The bill even goes beyond just the act, but any association that seeks to promote the practice is also going to be um, to be outlawed, and so on. So, countries of, of, and countries, if you go to Zimbabwe, is is, is the same. Um, I have seen in Kenya a debate between Uhuru Kenyatta and o Obama, you know, having some exchanges on on this. So, so it tells you that as Africans, broadly speaking, as Africans. We, 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 we are just, just against, completely against this practice. It's an abhorrent practice. Right. And for all men and women of God, all religious communities, it is an abhorrent practice. Okay. And I think that um, this is the angle from which we must, we should not be viewed so much from the angle of human rights. It is not a human rights issue, but it's something that is anti-human, anti-God, anti-family. And so, Maintaining it and making it widespread spells doom for the whole of the society. Before and that's we, our, our, the way our law must be, must be weighed. Before I shoot the next, next question, let me, let me just let... Uh, hold on, Doc. Hold on, Doc. Please hold on for me. Let me just add that you can contribute to the program. Just reach out to us on social media. I believe at some point we'll put up our WhatsApp number as well if you'd like to shoot us a message. But on social media with the hashtag AM uh, Show. Shake. so tell us... Uh, what exactly does Islam say about homosexuality? I want us to delve into the religious angling to this conversation now. And I've cited a number of you know, pieces of scripture that maybe we can look at as we have this discussion. I'll throw that to uh, Dr. Ofori later on. But for you, what does Islam say categorically when it comes to homosexuality? Categorically, there's Islam in the Quran chapter 7, verse 68 to 70 and, 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 and forward brings to us the story of Sodom and Gomorrah and the prophet Lut. Mm. When men came to attack, came to attack the, the, the angels that have come in the form of humans and have come to them, first of all, the response of Lot or Lut in the Quran tells them that these are my daughters. Now, those daughters he mentioned were the female members of the community. He said, these are more pure to you. These are what God has created for you. Why would, then will you take to the indecent, lustful, and, and destructive life? So it spells out clearly to us that homosexuality, one, is a deviation from God's order. Two, it is indecent, it is carnal, it is lustful, and then it is destructive. The final thing is that the practice was so abominable as to attract the wrath of God. And so God turned down that city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And that is to tell you how terrible the punishment, punishment is. That punishment is the basis for the prohibition of homosexuality um, in, in Islam. And classical jurisprudence in Islam, the classical jurisprudence, I'm saying classical. In fact, all the four, four imams of the Islamic schools of jurisprudence have pronounced death sentence for anyone who practice it. That is the, plat uh, the, the, the classical position. But in the modern contemporary position, we say yes. Anyone who shows inclination for homosexuality is engaging in abomination, is likely to fall into an abomination. That person needs help. If, th if those people will accept that they are in a certain disorder, 
mental disorder, then we can sympathize with them and get a certain help through counseling, through psychiatric you know, medication for them to be able, and then through prayer, uh, which we do by with all sympathy and empathy, that they have been captured, they have fallen captive to their lust and carnal desire, and so therefore they need a certain help, then we can help them um, through. That is to spell to you how Islam prohibits this particular uh, kind of action. Now, Dr. Ofori, you, you are Christian and you subscribe to certain values. I want us to discuss this from both angles. And again, I'll quote the words of scripture. I'll go to Matthew 7, 1, 1 to 3. It has been quoted, quoted copiously in recent times to back the fact that maybe those on your end are being judgmental. And what is written there? Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, will it be measured to you? Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Question is, don't you feel those on your side are being unduly judgmental since we all sin anyway? Uh, th thank you very much. You see, um, this is how people abuse the scriptures for their selfish needs. Um, because the same scripture you are quoting, okay, uh, I, I, I thought you were going to come to Leviticus 18, 22. And, and, and I have both of them there. I'll the be getting to those as well. It's expressly talking against it, okay? Now, so when you, you deviate from the scripture that is directly opposing that behavior and go and talk about judgment, Paul, at the same time, writes to the Corinthian church and said, are we not to judge those who are within? Mm. So we, and he even goes on to say, aren't we going to judge angels that when you have little matters amongst yourself, you, you go to court? So then that statement from, uh, uh, that you have quoted from, what, what was it Matthew you said? Seven? Matthew 7, 1 to 3. Yes, yes. It's a mis misapplication of scripture. Simple and straightforward. You, you started by talking about gender. He said male and female created he them. And we are on the same wavelength when it comes to this issue with our, our dear brother, brothers, the Muslims. The traditional people also have the same philosophy. The God factor is what is bringing us together in this coalition. Yeah. Okay? Now, when you talk about gender, the gender they are talking about is not the gender that you and I know as male and female. Today, they have a hundred different genders. And when I went to, um, when the CSC matter came up and I, uh, I was doing the studies, I went to all the UN agencies and their websites. All of them have what they call strategic pillars that must define the modus operandi. There was one strategic pillar that was common to all of them, and it is titled uh, diversity in sexual orientation. That is one pillar common to all the agencies. After that, they are telling the, the, the students, that there's a difference between biological sex and gender. That is an abomination. Biological sex and gender are identical according to the creator who put us on this planet. The earth belongs to God. It's not for, for America or the Europeans. It is the law who created. If they want to have their laws, they can go and create their own planet and do what they like there. But as long as they are on this earth, created by the one who made us, then they have to abide by the laws of the land. You can't go and live in somebody's apartment and do what you like. You sign a lease, and there are restrictions as to what you can do, even with the infrastructure there. You can't change anything without their express approval. So these people must understand that the, the one who created us put these laws in place, and many of them will resort to, uh, oh, we are not, uh, 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 what, do, what do they call it, theocratic nation. Sodom and Gomorrah was not theocratic. There was nothing about theocracy. They didn't know anything about God. They were just having their fun. Abraham's uh, 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 nephew, Lot, happened to live in, in Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham was not living in Sodom and Gomorrah. God came down to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and Abraham was pleading for Sodom and Gomorrah because he knew Lot was there. And he said, please, if there are 50 people, will you destroy the righteous and and, and the wicked together. I said, no, 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 no. For the sake of 50 people, I will for, I will, I will spare Sodom and Gomorrah. And it came Abraham all the way down. all yes. the way to 10. Mm. Lord had three sons, each one with their wife 
and he and the wife, that's eight. They didn't even make any contribution to ministering to, to, to change the wicked lifestyle of the Sodomites. And so they couldn't even find 10 people to, to spare the land. So we know that God is sparing the nations because they are righteous people in the land, as a Muslim brother has explained. They are righteous people in the land who will, are going by the righteous acts and lines and guidance and statutes of the living God. That is what is sparing us. Okay, so let's, so let's, when let's, we say we don't want this thing, we are talking about pro preventing God's judgment upon us. That is the fact that they don't see. Okay. They think, oh, I want to have my own way. You can't have your own way if it will bring trouble to the rest of society. Shortly, if it's going to bring untold bills of expenditure Dr. To, to the economy when we need money for development. Right. If you can hear me, and I know you can, uh, shortly we'll be taking some Facebook messages. But the other side would add also uh, detailed and put down those verses of scripture you were making reference to. This is what is written there. In Leviticus 18, verse 22, it says, Do not lie with a man as one lies with a woman. That is detestable. Leviticus 18, 22. Do not lie with a man as one lies with a woman. That is detestable. Again, when you go to Leviticus 20, verse 13, it says, If a man lies with a man as one lies with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. They must be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. But here's the interesting part. Here's the interesting part. This same Leviticus also banned tattoos, pork, shellfish, and the rest. But people are getting tattooed nowadays. People are taking pork, uh, with all apologies to uh, shake, and all of that. So some are saying, well, that reflected then. It doesn't necessarily reflect now. It hasn't progressed with society. What is your take on that? Quick one. Uh, that is because you have left out Romans chapter 1. Mm. Go to Romans chapter 1 and find out what Paul is saying to the Romans. There he is very clear. Romans chapter 1, the whole chapter from maybe, can you go there now and just check? It is clear. He says that because they rejected God's order, God gave them up to a reprobate mind, a mind that is off mark, a mind that is apostate. That is where, I'm. excuse me to say, where President Biden is now. He has taken on a reprobate mind and as a Catholic is going against the very foundations of the Catholic Church, the Holy Catholic Church. And it is there. He's talking about men sleeping with men, women sleeping with women, and, and men sleeping with animals, bestiality. It is all described nicely in uh, Romans chapter 1. So that people which, who which, say... Which specific uh, verse? Romans 1, which specific verse? So I can highlight it for all of us. Go there very quickly. Go to verse 26 and let's see, 26 down. So verse 26 actually says, because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same that? way, the men it's also really abandoned... Yes, in the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Mm -hmm. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Continue. Okay, so furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what not ought to be done. Did you hear that? Out of the rebellion against God's order of sanctity for life, yeah. God gave them to a depraved mind. A depraved mind is asking for human rights and you want to give it to them? A depraved mind of a murderer, and I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about what Sheikh mentioned, that there are other groups of people who believe they have the right. People can't find jobs, and so they form an association of uh, 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 thieves. And they come to parliament saying, we want human rights, that we can go to any house and ask them to give us a way to take what we want. Or we have become cannibals. We need human blood. And so uh, from today onwards, we want human rights. That's a depraved thinking. Okay. That is off mark. And we shouldn't tolerate that type of behavior. All That's right. what we are talking about. Let's, let's quickly take some of those messages you've been sending through, as and when they are available, before I come back to uh, Sheikh to find out 
uh, what his thoughts are on a few other matters we're going to be uh, looking at as we get ready to wrap up. Uh, you can send through your messages uh, via or with the hashtag AM uh, show. If you have a WhatsApp number, you can also reach out to us. Whatever messages you've sent through, uh, we shall be taking them. Maybe Facebook at some point in time. Let's start from Facebook. And we have this one, some of you reacting. Uh, so the question posed there about whether it suffices uh, what the, the president has said. And here are some of your, your comments. Let's quickly scroll to uh, some of those comments as they've come through. This one says, uh, so it's from Ladi uh, Awuni, who says, he should act and stop talking too much. Ghanaians are tired of his talking and I've seen nothing new in his testament. Those, his words. Okay. Abdul, Abdul Idrisu says, appointees of Akufuado and NPP communicators are busily sharing a declaration made by Akufuado today that legalization of homosexuality, I should say, won't happen. Okay. Let's get to this one. Royal Boating says, why can't the media stop talking about this? What is so special and intrinsic about LGBTQI? I don't get it. So like Dr. Ofori, you say we should simply stop talking about it. Uh, Alhassan Adam says the president is misleading Ghanaians and dece deceiving all of us. Uh, the LGBTQI people are not advocating for them to be allowed to marry. Uh, but if we can just scroll up a bit but instead they want their rights to be respected so that they can practice it without having to face the law. The president should just be bold and criminalize it. So you would be asking for stiffer penalties, basically. Vincent Chapman says, yes, but what goes behind, we don't know. I don't quite get what you're suggesting, uh, Mr. Chapman. Kojo Bentley says, he should explain to us the interview he had on Al Jazeera. Okay, so that's years ago. And uh, you want to know what he meant then. Samuel Apare says, I was expecting the president to rather make same-sex criminal and punishable by putting in place a law to stop this practice of LGBT. So as we know it now, Mr. President says same-sex marriage won't happen under his watch. But advocacy, I guess um, we have nothing on that. Brainstorm says, do you think the people just got up and opened the office without his notice? Well, what are you insinuating there? Um, CJ Ada says, he waited till we took the vaccines from them, then booted them out. Where them refers to who exactly? Um, okay, so let's, let's skip that. Uh, this one says it's difficult getting to. So Abraham says, talking without walking the talk is mischievous uh, and misleading. That's what Ekufuado is doing, saying stuff to the public and behind the scenes, uh, something contrary is happening. You say hypocrisy. Well, I wish some of you could back up some of these things with some uh, quotes from him or evidence in any way. Exo Jr. says, uh, Joy News, what is strong about what Mr. President said? Did he say he will punish them when caught? How did we get here? Why now? Okay. So we'll take, uh, if, if there are a few more, we shall just take a look at uh, all that you've been sending through. Nana B, action, not words. He should present a bill to Parliament to be passed against this LGBT like how he did to the vigilant vigilantes. Simple. Enough of the talk. Kofi Mengo, if anyone wants to be gay, which is a choice, uh, they should do so privately. Simple and short. Um, who goes around preaching and announcing they are straight? Okay, well, maybe it would be because uh, straight is what we've all come to know, right? Uh, this one says, he put his presidency on the line in fighting Galamse, but what did we see? So that's a jab. Uh, you are saying, well, he put his presidency on the line in that respect, but um, what did we see? So I guess in this instance as well, you are doubtful. Uh, maybe we could wrap it up here or take a few more. Denzel Bwachi Bwachi says, nothing can wash uh, the earlier stance he put forward. Okay. And you are going after journalists, but we're merely doing our job. We're informing you in, in, in any way. Has he done anything contrary to what he said that warrants this question of yours? It's a new day and you need... Okay, so uh, we put these matters forward not just because we want to uh, get all of you talking, but because these are matters that affect the very fabric of our society. If we don't talk about it, you are the same people who will come at us later that essential matters were missed by us. Uh, we take the good and the bad. We take them in our stride. But... Let me come to Sheikh. Uh, in recent times, we've also heard of the journalists against LGBTQI. 
they have commended Mr. President for uh, making a clearer or putting forth a clearer stance on the LGBTQI arrangement. But that notwithstanding, they are calling for a legislative instrument to be enacted, discussed and passed. I want to believe that is the stance of the Islamic community as well, the chief imam. And they have threatened to resort to the Supreme Court for a clearer interpretation of Section 104 of the Criminal Code of 1960. I just want to find out from you, is that a stance that you wholly support? And what are you going to do as the Islamic community to back this up, if it is? Well, I mean, I mean thank you very much. And uh, let me also um, encourage um, the citizens to show some respect and show some recognition for the president coming out at least we must we must respect that he has listened to the pressure and has come out to indicate that under his presidency there's no way uh, same sex is going to be legalized and it, it has connection truly it has connection with the homo homosexual um, um movement and the orientation meaning that he will never support that and i think we should we should take it like that but like we have said it is not enough. So um, we should move a step further and tighten up the law. We already have a law that criminalizes the practice, but it's not sufficient. So that is where we come from. We say the law must be made tighter. In other words, make it more encompassing and comprehensive. Such of the objectionable sex orientations that are related to homosexuality and also related to same, same sex which we think that is an attack on our family values. For me, it's a more, more important thing. The stability of our family system is, lies at the core of our social stability and our true and genuine development. That is what we, we must consider. And so we are calling on any kind of enactment by order of law that will ensure that, that will ensure that this kind of practice is completely banned and completely um, outlawed. I must also add that this is not the duty for president alone. It is a duty for all of us, including the parliamentarians. So let's see how the parliamentarians will table this at the parliament. I am truly uh, um, stricken by the former speaker of parliament who said that he will never, he will never superintend over any discussion aimed at legalizing homosexuality or legalizing same sex. He made this outrightly clear to the hearing of any person. So this must give us an opportunity to raise the issue to our parliament where we enact our laws so that we we'll completely outlaw this kind of uh, practice. It should not be left to the present alone, but that we as citizens must also pick it up if it means that Pushing that in at the at the parliament. Right. That is what we must we must all all do. Oh, but we oh, must oh. recognize that it is good that we have heard once again from the president saying that he will never support same sex in our country. Okay. Right. 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 Before I take your final comment, policy Jane. statement. Right. This is for me a policy statement that should inform all government institutions, including the Ministry of Religion and Culture, including the Ministry of Gender. This is a policy statement made to them by the president, and they must act on it, take it to the floor of parliament. We call on the Minister of Religions to take an issue, make a proposal, a bill, send a bill to the parliament for a debate on this, on this issue. Are you also going to call on members of parliament who are Muslims, maybe? Are you going to reach out to them? Are you going to sort of lobby them to push this in, in, in parliament? Is this something you're contemplating doing? In fact, uh, on this matter, we, we are one with the Christian community. On this particular matter, we are one and we are on the same page. So there is a certain kind of interfaith collaboration, interfaith understanding. I would rather push for um, the, both the Christian parliamentary caucus and the Muslim caucus of parliament to join hands and place a bill before the parliament for this a law to be enacted to completely ban and outlaw uh, same sex and homosexuality and all related other objectionable sex orientation, all of them. So LGBTQIA plus all the pluses, 
those that we can imagine, those we cannot even now conceptualize. But this is to make it infinity, to take it to infinity. So the, the scope is going okay. to be widened. Right. I call all parents, Christian parents, Muslim parents, traditional parents, to begin to engage with their children. Mm. There is a storm of immorality that is blowing, that is going to attack our family life. I am, I am really afraid. I am really frightened by the arguments I heard from a young girl in Ghana here who says that she is a humanist. She is an atheist. And girls are arguing with, with science. And so family, family must rise up. Okay. Family life I have to is give the, the very last and we bite must all to all come out against it. I have to give the very last bite to Dr. Ofori, uh, just to be fair. Dr. Ofori, so in, in some 30 seconds, um, what would be your parting comments? And what is the next move for the uh, you know, Coalition for Proper Human Sexual Rights and Family Values on this matter? In some 30 seconds, and, and we're done. You think has summarized everything perfectly. Mm. I think the Christian and the Muslim community should push a bill in parliament. The president said this some two or three years ago, and the fact that they've been able to open an office tells you that statement has not touched them. We need to bar them completely. And that's what Sheikh is saying. And so we will appeal to the Christian and Muslim caucus in parliament to put forth a bill to put out, completely outlaw this and all its ramifications right. and, and, and possibilities. Right. Completely, permanently. And then we'll be safe. Thank Gentlemen, you. thank you so much for your time, Dr. Sam Onwano Ofori, Executive Member, Coalition for Proper Human Sexual Rights and Family Values. We've also been joined by... Uh, Sheikh Shwaib, who actually is spokesperson for the National Chief Iman. Thank you so much for uh, joining the conversation this morning. So at this point in time, even as we get past this uh, legal argument, in a way, we're also looking at another legal argument. The Supreme Court is uh, delivering judgment on uh, Thursday. We'll be bringing you some infographics on what the petitioner has been asking uh, the Supreme Court to grant him and the responses by the first and second respondents. So we'll be bringing you some infographs of that just to run you through what has been happening up to this point in uh, time. That is up next on the AM show.
Mama, so it's going to be a few days and we're going to say goodbye to you. Election, election petition? petition and well, going to the Supreme Court. There's an opportunity to review the decision again, right? Isn't there? We've had what? Charlie? Yeah. Another review. I mean... Depending on, uh, on, on, on it's, how... It's the same Supreme Court, unless, of course, we are talking of constituting a different panel, which, which gets into another you know, story altogether. But I think for this phase, at least, Thursday will be the day, D-Day. Yeah, it will be. We're counting down. We've got three more days. So that's uh, uh, in terms of the reminder where we've come from, what the petitioner is asking for and what the responses have been. Hmm. There you have it. We will keep counting down to Thursday when the final verdict is delivered by the Supreme Court. On that note, Ben. Hey, it's...